On the roller coaster of American political life, few people have had a bumpier ride than Jim McGreevy. He rose through the ranks of local politics to become New Jersey's governor in 2001, his tenure marked by policy accomplishments and scandals. Then in 2004, in a spectacle of high drama, he made a stunning announcement. So my truth is that I am a gay American. He confessed to what he said was an extramarital affair with the man later identified as a former advisor whom he had appointed to state office, who denied any affair and said the governor had sexually harassed him, a claim McGreevy denied. What followed was a bitter divorce played out in the media, a tell-all memoir and book tour, and the disdain of a public that once held him in high regard. McGreevy's fall is familiar to many, but his life since then, outside the public eye, is less well known. What I consider to be my, my greatest failing was my decision to, to break my relationship with my God. And that's, you know, that's the ultimate sense of arrogance. I have control, I'm governor, I can control the, the machinations of New Jersey politics, I can control um, the balance of my personal relationships, God, move over, I'm the master of my universe. Today, McGreevy calls himself a changed man with a radically altered value system. Now 54 years old, he aspires to be an Episcopal priest in a church not yet ready to ordain him. Dear God, thank you for the, for the joy of this day, for this community. His mission? To raise the spirits of people in prison and reform a penal system that he says is broken. We confess to you, O oh God. Let's hear it. We confess to you, O oh God. Again. We confess to you, O oh God. We confess it's just one part of life after office for McGreevy, a corner of his world we saw when we spent time with him earlier this year. I am, I am, strong, a strong, powerful, powerful, happy. This isn't a jail cell anymore. This is a monastery. This is a convent. This is a sisterhood. McGreevy has been hired as a spiritual group leader at a residential drug treatment facility called Integrity House in Newark. As part of his job, he leads a group of female prisoners at Hudson County Jail, most of them addicted to drugs or alcohol, many, though not all, charged with drug felonies. Some were awaiting trial when we spent time with them last spring. We confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth. Whether it's the gospel, the Quran, the Hebrew Bible, whatever it is, it's living out, being a witness to that change. I was telling myself every day, I'm a loving child of God. God loves me despite what anybody else, how anybody else feel, God loves me. For so many of, of, of these women, they have created or they've engaged in disastrously bad choices, in part, by virtue of their environment, but in part because of a lack of virtue in their own lives. And now they have an understanding that their self-worth isn't limited to the bad decisions that they have made, but there's an intrinsic value. I want you to begin to focus on that person in your life who loves you unconditionally. I want you to focus on the eyes and the mouth and the voice and the smell of that person who loves you unconditionally. And I know that Jim has had his struggles and, um, you know, if he can get to a place of grace where he's at, I know I can and a lot of the women feel the same way. Like, I fell into place. I feel like this is where I belong. As bad as it might sound, it was like I got arrested for a reason. Even if it was just to meet these wonderful women that's been placed in my life. And I'm thankful for it. Since last spring when we visited them, these women have been released from Hudson County Jail. We confess to you, O oh God. On the altar of your salvation. We confess to you, O oh God. Is there an aspect in which what you're doing now that is, that is most of your life ministering uh, is in any way sort of an atonement for you? And I think, you know, at a certain point, there's probably, you know, sort of a, a good Roman sense of penitential, you know, James, the importance of works. Um, but, but I would argue in a, you know, in a very healthy sense. But it's also something, you know, frankly, these women give so much to me and they treat me so loving. But, you know, j just having the capacity to recognize their worth, 
and to begin to put them on a new path, on a new narrative, is um, healing for them, but as healing for me also. Keep coming back. You want to do Amen. 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 It's asking the prisoner that she or he need not be totally defined by the past narrative of their life. Today, McGreevy is an Episcopal priest aspirant, having gone before a board at the Diocese of Newark. While the Episcopal Church freely accepts gays and lesbians into the clergy, they rejected his first attempt at the ordination process. While neither the diocese nor McGreevy would comment on what they call a confidential process, reports indicated the church wanted more distance between his very public resignation and divorce and his potential priesthood. It's not uncommon for aspirant priests to have to go through several rounds of priesthood attempts. He now lives with his partner of six years, Executive Mark O'Donnell, in this Plainfield, New Jersey home where they raise his 10-year-old daughter who lives in a shared custody arrangement with his former wife, Dina Matos. Matos declined to comment for this story. McGreevy now occasionally teaches business classes at Keene University and serves on the board of Faith in America, a nonprofit dedicated to ending religious-based discrimination against LGBT people. But he makes a living mainly as a contract employee of Integrity House, which is partially funded through public grants. Neither Integrity House nor McGreevy would disclose his salary. Well, I now have a dark and color patterns. My grandmother wanted to a good priest, Roman priest in the, in, the, in the worst way. I mean, you know, Irish were supposed to be poets, politicians are priests. <laughs> I am lousy at poetry, I, I, you know, the priesthood I decided, so politi politics was the only option, um, not to be a failed um, grandson. But fail as a politician, he did, and in spectacular fashion. The resignation was, he says, a moment informed by a scapular his grandmother had given him just before she died. Before. I went out to give my speech, I had the green scapula, and I sort of wrapped it around my hand, and I just sort of put it in my palm, and I said, Grandma, this is for you. I just, you know, hope, you know, the angels are keeping you in care. And it was just, you know, an acceptance of, of my truth, my authenticity. But when you get to that point, you also reawaken and break open your connection with God. Because, for me, because there were no more secrets, there were no more lies. It was who I wanted to be and who I also Andy, gave myself permission to be. And what I wanted to be more than anything was probably a, a simple parish priest that would probably have given me the greatest joy in my life. But in the early part of his life, it was politics that would come first, a decision that he says proved toxic for him. When you sort of walk out of the governor's office, you know, two days later, the phone stops. You know, you go from having three phones with a ringing, you know, 24-7, you know, to five messages a week. And you begin to understand that, you know, so much of that human contact was proximity to power. As governor, you, you sort of become more process-oriented. You're dealing with power brokers, you're dealing with the budget, you're dealing with decisions. And you become more removed from people. And as you become more removed from people and deal solely with the, with the quality and the quantity of power, becomes, at least for me, a much less godly exercise. Still, if religion is the focus of his life now, politics, or at least an interest in policy, remains a part of it as well. He spends a good deal of his time preaching about prison reform. And for those of you who have been in jails recently in America or any place, there isn't all that much good happening. You know, I would drive past a prison. You know, when I was in the governor's office, I'd go to prison. It was more, you know, showboat. I'd go once a year during Christmas. But it wasn't something you were actively engaged in. And when we have one out of every 99 Americans in a jail or involved in the criminal justice system, you know, and this isn't, you know, we have 24,000 people in New Jersey in jail. I mean, this isn't an academic exercise. Part of the mission of Integrity House, where he is a recovery leader, is to serve as a halfway house and treatment center for addicts who otherwise might be facing jail time. And many are in the program as an alternative to jail time. If prison ministry is most of his work at Integrity House, being a policy advocate has become a part of what he does as well. McGreevy has been pushing for drug treatment programs in prison. The idea? Treat substance abuse 
abusers there, and they're less likely to commit crimes once they're released. He met with New Jersey lawmakers earlier this year on a bill called Earn Your Way Out. It would have granted early release to nonviolent addicts if they got help while still in jail. The bill eventually stalled. But McGreevy continues to call for similar reforms. He says he's discussed addiction and treatment issues several times this year with Governor Chris Christie. In late November, Christie announced a task force to explore how to cut down on recidivism and reintroduce offenders into society. McGreevy argues that the cost of housing and storing drug-addicted inmates without rehabilitating them to be more productive members of society when they do get out is too high. This is a business model that doesn't work. And so if, if you're going to throw them away and lock them up in perpetuity, I may find it morally offensive, but you can get away with it. But that being said, we're not doing that. And if over 95% are getting out, what are we producing? We're producing a disaster. Whether you're a neocon or you're a conservative, whether you're liberal or progressive, everybody gets it. This system is broken. It ain't gonna work. You have a sacred soul. This small portion of McGreevy's new world is a far cry from the nadir of his adult life. At the height of that scandal in September 2004, only 35 percent of New Jersey voters said they would ever vote for McGreevy if he would run for office in the future. May you be joyful, happy, kind, loving, and peaceful. Courage to change the things I can, wisdom to know the difference. Keep coming back. What would you say to the person watching this now uh, who says, you know, he's found his redemption. You know, I, I still really don't know about this Jim McGreevy. I mean, why should we trust him now? Why, why should we believe that this is the new Jim McGreevy? My judgment isn't going to be by Andy or by the person watching this. It's what I do in relationship to my God. So if, if it's almost, you know, I, I spent a life trying to please people um, because I thought that was a way to circumvent or to navigate around my sexual identity. Now, God willing, I, I try to seek to do God's will in my life. Um, and that may not necessarily always be popular. It may not always necessarily be easy or the, you know, the color du jour, but it's what makes me authentically me. As long as I'm going to be defined by other people, I'm going to self-limit whatever good potentially I can do in the world. And I know people will watch this and say, well, another screwed up politician, he screws up his career, and had he not done that, he would have been A, B, or C, and he would have never probably focused upon God. And my response is, you're probably right. But better to focus upon these transcendent values now as opposed to on my deathbed. In a different place or a different time, God willing, I would have made different decisions at earlier points in my life. But right now, if I can do the right thing by virtue of the woman in the Hudson County Jail, that's more than good enough. Mm -hmm.